Good morning, gentlemen. Wonderful weather, you can see that all around. I'm in front of my villa, the beautiful sea frontage. And I thought it was a good idea to talk to you about Pakistan. Now, Pakistan, as you know, is a brother of India. But the upper side, the different, the twin, but with a different face. It is the land of Hades, the land of death. So, gentlemen, there are a lot of problems in Pakistan. And now we understand, and you must be aware about the latest news, that there has been an attack by terrorist groups in the Pakhtun Wali area. And 23 Pakistan soldiers have been killed and another 33 injured. That's a huge number. And Pakistan is at bit set. They're heading for the next general election in 8th February. I hope it takes place. I don't know whether it's going to take place. But it is slated to take place. And now they have this terrorist organization problem coming in. It's a tremendously big problem, gentlemen, because these people are wanting the imposition of the Sharia and creating Pakistan into caliphate. Now, you remember the caliphate which was made by Baghdadi, the ISI which covered Syria and Iraq, and it was a terrible time for the minorities and even for the Iraqis themselves, till he was hounded by doubt. Well, gentlemen, I think it's a no-holds-barred battle and the Pakistanis have blamed Afghanistan for it. I frankly don't think so, that Afghanistan is responsible for all this thing. But the Afghans have got a lot of problems of their own. But at the same time, there is the ideological backing which they have given to the Tehreek e Taliban, which is the Pakistan organization, extremist organization. There are two or three more such organizations are floating around and they've been creating a lot of mayhem in Pakistan. And I understand that after the uh, takeover of the new government, that is after Imran Khan went away, there have been more than 50 attacks on the security forces all over Pakistan. It's not a good sign. And now the question arises, how did this happen? I mean, in the sense, after all, why did it happen? Well, they must thank one of their presidents for this, and that is President Zia ul Haq. This man was president from 1978 to 89, and he was a man without any popular support, so he had to bolster his support up, and he bolstered his support up by feeding to the extremist elements in Pakistan, thinking that the mullah is going to help him, and he's going to remain in power for all time to come. Well, gentlemen, that is the actual fact, and he then formulated a policy that he knew they could not fight, the Pakistan army could not fight India. So he said, let's bleed India with a hundred cuts. So he began to nurture terrorist organizations in Pakistan, the aim being to cross the border and create mayhem in Kashmir, Punjab and other places. Well, gentlemen, easy to make a plan, write on a paper and send it around, but on the ground it becomes very difficult. And Zia paid the price of riding the tiger. You remember he had got his opponent, the previous Prime Minister and President Zulfikar Huli Hatto, hanged to death in the middle of the night on a false charge of murder. And not only he, but his other generals like General Chisti and other so-called generals who put all those medals, you know, besmirched their uniform by this does start the act. Well, gentlemen, that is the actual fact which I must tell you now. And he paid the price for it because somebody put a bomb in his plane, a C-130, and blew up. And the American ambassador, who was his great crony pal, you know, they were together and six generals all went to the next world. But he left behind the seeds of this thing, the terrorism, you know, by, the, by nurturing the terrorist organization and with the subsequent Pakistan leadership thought it was a damn good idea. And they kept on nurturing them. They were distinguishing between good terrorists, bad terrorists. There's nothing like that. They didn't understand. Even though our Sharif in his first and second term as Prime Minister didn't understand that terrorism is a seamless organization. And there's nothing like good terrorism and bad terrorism. And all the terrorists have now joined up and they put Pakistan on the mat. And this Tariq-e-Taliban, the Pakistan extremist, said really, 
uh, playing hell into the system. You remember they killed about 300 children in one of the army schools in Peshawar a long time back. Well, it, they did it. And then in Rawalpindi, there have been attacks all around. There have been attacks in Karachi. There have been attacks in Baluchistan. And tens of Pakistani soldiers have been killed. So, there's an old saying, the birds have come home to roost. And these terrorist groups are now have come home to roost in Pakistan to see that, well, we're going to do something about it. And we're going to set sort you people out. Pakistan has the tramplings of a modern state. The women are yet not restricted. They are there in all walks of life. And this is what the Taliban doesn't want. They want a reversal to the old pristine Islamic state. And at the same time, they don't want the Pakistan penal code and other things. They want the Sharia to be the main law of the land. Well, the Pakistanis are fighting, but it's a half-hearted fight. And there doesn't seem to be any cohesive policy in Pakistan because the previous Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has come back now and all the charges against him have been put away. I mean, he'd been sentenced for 10 years to jail in one charge. Seven years for jail and other, and all have been put in the court story, and now the court has said they are defunct. He's acquitted. So, obviously, there must have been some evidence which went against him at that time. But probably now they say there's no evidence. So, the decks are cleared for him to become the next Prime Minister of India, if at all, Prime Minister of Pakistan, if at all, the elections are held as slated on the 8th of February, 2024. Let's wait and see what happens. In the meanwhile... This trouble of Pakistan is not going to end so fast and so easy. Pakistan will have to decide once for all whether you want to run with the hare or hunt with the hound. You can't do both. They tried it earlier in Afghanistan. They killed a lot of Americans. At the same time, they're the pals of the Americans. And the Americans were wondering all the time who's stabbing them in the back. Is Pakistan their ally? But the Americans, as you know, are pretty blind. You know, like Cyclops, they got one eye, and you blind that eye, you don't know. Cyclops, as you all know, was a great giant uh, who, part of mythology, in the famous tale of Ulysses. So it's something like the Americans, something like Cyclops. You blind that eye, they don't know what's happening. And they all the time think India should be kept low. So I will just digress and say that India faces a greater danger, not from Pakistan or China, but more from America. Maybe I'm going to make a video on that some later stage and you can, gentlemen, have a look at it, I'm sure. And uh, you're watching my videos. I repeat in between here that please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and give your comment. And I look forward to interacting with you more and more. Gentlemen, now coming down to Pakistan. Pakistan is facing a tremendous insurrection in Balochistan, number one, in the northwest frontier province, the earlier now called the Pakhtun Valley, and also in places in Sindh. In Punjab, there is a modicum of modernization. In fact, that is the soul of Pakistan. But how long will they last? How long will they continue? The Baluch Liberation Army is fighting, and so are the Tariq Taliban and other extremist groups. And they have been nurtured earlier by Pakistan themselves. That is the point. General Ziu al Haq is the man who brought them up, and other people continued following these things, you know, and it was a terrible situation throughout. They also tried to solve the Kashmir problem, which they feel is the main problem as far as India is concerned, but they have failed at every step. It's a different matter that India let them off the hook in 1971. That was the time to press on and get the Kashmir issues sorted out, but probably. Indira Gandhi developed cold feet and so did the Field Marshal Manaksha and that was the end of the story. Gentlemen, what are the future? It's very important. The future is that there is a resurgent of anti-Islamism in Europe. That is something can be seen from the fact that a man like Gerd Wilder has become the, likely to become the Prime Minister of the Netherlands. And then the fact remains that the two groups are in existence in the Islamic world. One is the monarchist group, the other is the republican group. We'll discuss that later. 
coming to Pakistan, I don't know in which side Pakistan is on. Recently, the Hamas had made an appeal to Pakistan to help solve the problem as far as the fight with Israel is concerned. I couldn't understand how Pakistan could solve the problem when they couldn't win a single battle against India and they can't even sort out the terrorist organizations which are operating in Pakistan. So what sort of help can Pakistan give to Hamas to beat the Israelis? I don't think they can do anything. Gentlemen, Pakistan is at the dire, or I would say the crossroads of history now. And it's very important that a very sagacious man takes over. I do think, feel for all the ills attributed to Nawaz Sharif, he is the best man of the lot. He has realized that you have to have peace with India if you want to progress. And now, I don't know whether the Pakistan army believes in it or no, but that is the actual fact what really matters. General Munir is now in America. He's been summoned there and probably he'll have to give a lot of spin and polish there and convince the Americans, look, I'm on your side. China is getting restive. And China, in the last meeting with Pakistan, has asked for payment of all the military goods which have been supplied to them. Because they have the money to give it. Pakistan is now in a state of bankruptcy. And who's responsible for it? I think it's all traced down to Zia ul Haq. And then, of course, the subsequent people who came in. When Benazir Bhutto, for some time, was the Prime Minister, it's totally ineffectual. Gentlemen, now the situation is that there is a resurgence of terrorism in Pakistan. I don't know what's going to happen, what's going to happen further. But the writing is on the wall. Maybe it's something like uh, what the ancient emperors had written something, you know, in a hieroglyph writing which you can't read. But it's already written and maybe Pakistan could be moving towards destruction. I mean, until and unless a Jinnah comes, a Muhammad Ali Jinnah. And uh, Jinnah, of course, got a lot of problems himself. He created a lot of problems, went away. But at least he was a secular man. And until Pakistan reverts to secularism, which was the essence of the British Raj, I don't think Pakistan really can move forward. We have to do away with things like the blasphemy laws, where you have more than 100 people on death row. You have to do away with the facts that you want you ignore the origins of the people of Pakistan who were basically Hindus. They are all Hindu converts, 99% of them. You can't forget your roots. And if you remember your roots, then you go forward. You remember the famous novel by V.S. Naipaul, Roots. So that's very important. And Pakistan must appreciate its roots. You can say I belong to the Turkish group or something, but they nothing to do with them. They everything to do with the subcontinent, with the Hindus. We're one race. And gentlemen, now I think I'll come to the end of my video. I once again make a request. Please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends. I look forward to seeing you more. It's a wonderful time. I'm going to be here for some more time. And uh, I'm relaxing here in my villa in uh, salubrious surroundings wonderful place and I'll close now and say goodbye glory to India and once again take care and God bless